Hi hey everyone. So today I thought I would try to show you what the Hydros Plus Turbo Plus is going to do on the new uh, Kubota BX. Now, I don't know exactly every model that this is going to work on. Um, most of these tractors do have the D902 engine, but what's important is the configuration of the engine. And I'm not going to go into the detail of that today, but just if you're wondering whether or not this is going to work on your older BX, I think there's a pretty good chance it's going to work on uh, a number of them, but I don't know for sure. I think the 2380, 2370, 2360, all of those are probably pretty safe. Anything before that, I'm not sure. And I'm just not as familiar with Kubota, so I may not uh, be getting some of that right. Now, obviously with the 2380, the BX23S, the 25D, those, those are, however they swap into the different model numbers since they're gonna be the same, we'll figure out what works. Now the key, well actually, I don't wanna get into that today. What I wanna show you today is what kind of power we can actually make with this engine. And if you are following along or you have subscribed to the newsletter, you probably know that we're actively working on this, but because of the size, you can see the hood is over there. We just couldn't get all of it shoved in, honestly. The, it, there's more in there than it looks like there is. The headlight assemblies are kind of wonky and they stick way back. So ultimately, um, what we're gonna end up doing is casting a new exhaust manifold for this tractor. That's not ideal. I wanted to use the existing manifold, but basically the way it came out of the tractor, you'd have to come back up to the top and back around. And it just, it was getting to a point where it was, it, it was not making sense to do as much um, of the routing and the plumbing. If we just made a new exhaust manifold, that would solve all the, most of the problems that we needed. Now, I don't have the exhaust manifold in production yet. I'm still, my 3D printer will not print as big as this exhaust manifold is gonna be. And unfortunately, that means I have to outsource it. That takes a little bit longer. As soon as I get that nailed down, which is probably gonna be in the next week or two, um, I'll send it to casting for production. Uh, that will take some time, probably some something in the neighborhood of six, six weeks to eight weeks maybe. I, I don't know exactly how quickly I can get the first ones, but as soon as I have those, then we'll be off to the races. Because all the other stuff, I know what we're doing with those. Um, we're gonna use a lot of the same concepts that we used on the, the one series. Obviously, they're gonna be different. Now, uh, I do have to wait until I at least get I can actually do it with the 3D printed prototype manifold, but I have to get that before I can really finalize the exhaust plan, but that's still not gonna take as long as some of the other pieces. And so given that fact, we're still probably in into spring, um, hopefully before what I would call late spring. So, you know, April timeframe could very well be it, it might be May. That happens to be when we launched the One Series last year, but I'm hoping it'll be a little bit quicker than that. So, um, let me show you the power and uh, that'll, that'll kind of give you a sense and give you an idea if this is something that is interesting to you. Um, I have run this some before and I actually, <laughs> I, I was running it a little bit earlier and I thought there was something wrong because I was still building some boost, but I, I, I had ended up with a boost leak. And if you were to turn up the fuel on this thing and not give it boost, holy cow, it is gonna blow so much black smoke. And, uh, and I wasn't getting the power that I was expecting to get. I, I have done this one time before, just a single run. Obviously I need to do a number of runs to really make sure that, you know, that my numbers foot, but I feel really confident in the numbers. So I think you'll be excited what, about what we get. Uh, on this tractor if you're a BX owner. All right, so let's go ahead. Oh, I do have a boost gauge. This is my manual boost gauge that I end up using because it's just, there's no electronics and it's a little simpler now. The reason, you know, this is a, oops. This is what, good grief. This is a diaphragm version. And you can see I, I'm not all the way down to zero. It kind of sticks at one. 
but I'll just tell you, get, I'm getting similar numbers to what we're getting on the Yanmar, somewhere between eight and 10 pounds of boost under heavy load. So uh, let me go ahead and start this guy up. We'll kick on the PTO here. I'm just gonna hang this, hang this out here so I can kind of see it if I need to. But um, let me go back here and loosen everything up here. My light on. You can see that that a the light there. All right. So I don't think we're under any load. We're gonna go ahead and go up to wide open throttle. See, we already got some temperature in the engine. Wide open. Uh, show you. Oh. Just a pound or two whenever you're at wide open throttle. You know load. Get over here. Right on. What we're looking for is 15. I forgot to show you the boost. Man, let's see what we get. Go back up here. We're gonna pull it down to 15. So that is the most I have seen that boost gauge read. It was showing 10 to 11, so maybe 10 PSI boost on this one. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's really right where I'd say we'd want to be. You run at 10 PSI of boost for an extended period of time, you're, you're definitely going to see exhaust temps go up. Now, I'm not saying they're going to go up to any levels that you really have to worry about, which is somewhere around... 1400 degrees, 15, you know, somewhere in that range, that's when you have to really start worrying about them. If you're at a thousand or whatever, you're probably okay. Uh, but nobody wants to really run their tractor like that for a long time extended. And I, I'm sure, I mean, if you want to, it's your tractor, but I don't think I would recommend that. The idea is here is that we're producing uh, good, safe, uh, reliable power. Now, I pointed or I, I turned the camera up. Uh, while we were under load. And, and I saw a number at 2,700. I saw kind of a peak at 2,700, and that's a pretty good number. I don't know what the, what's going to translate to. I'm going to do that here just shortly and tell you. But that's, that's a pretty good number. Um, and, and this tractor only produced, I'll have to go back and look for sure, but it's something like 15, maybe a little more than 15. Uh, I'll put that on the screen. Actually, I go back and look. And, uh, and I know that 15, you know, that, that's probably like 12, 1300 PSI. We're, we're pretty close to doubling that. So uh, we'll see what the number shows out to be. But, but when I showed you this, like there was some, uh, you could see some smoke, but it really wasn't very much at all. And what that tells me is for the amount of boost that we are producing, we're right where we would need to be. In a perfect world, you wouldn't have any smoke. It would be perfectly clean, but if it's perfectly clean, it could mean that you're not giving it quite enough fuel for the amount of boost you have. What we know is we have enough fuel for the boost, so we're not going to have to, at least with this turbo setup, we're not going to have to worry about increasing sizes of 
of uh, plungers or anything like that. Um, this actually does more uh, fuel than the boost that we can produce. So let me do my calculation here and I'll come back and wrap it up. All right, we are back. So I've got my math, I'll, I'll put it on the screen, but big numbers for this tractor, uh, but very similar to what you see on the John Deere. Now, part of the reason the numbers are big is we're comparing it to itself and um, there is an asterisk though. When I did this tractor before, and just to remind you, we're using a calculation that takes flow and pressure and times it by a coefficient, and that gives us the horsepower that we are creating. And it's pretty accurate, I would say. It, is, it does ca account for some level of loss of um, you know, efficiency, so there, there's some nuance there, but it's a, it's a pretty much an industry standard uh, calculation that we're using. And so far, it really has bore out to be pretty well in line with what we're seeing on the manufacturer's page. Now, it wasn't quite in line on this one, and I don't really know the answer, but maybe it's just this particular tractor, but again, we're comparing it to itself, that's the important part. But I still have an asterisk because when I did it, at least on there, at least what you can see. Now I happen to know that I've done it a couple of times and that number that I got with what you could see was the biggest number that I've seen from this tractor. I've changed the approach a bit. Uh, previously what I was doing is, is at 540 RPMs, this is supposed to, this pump here is supposed to produce, uh, I think 17, 16.9 gallons per minute. So I was running it at, right at 17 gallons a minute. That'll, that basically pulls it down to, so that the tractor's running 540 RPMs. Now, with what I did at 15 gallons per minute, we were pulling out of the PTO range to right at about 3,000 RPMs. So what that makes sure that we do is give the, the, give the governor a chance to completely open, because that's important, and I need to do a video on the governor and why that's important, but trust me, that's the important part, that we open that all the way up and um, that we get so that we can see the most power. So these comparison numbers that I'm using aren't exactly apples to apples, but you'll have to trust me when I say, when I pulled this down, this tractor down to 15 gallons per minute and I used the same you know, coefficient and everything, this actually only, didn't even get quite get 15 horsepower. I'm not exactly sure why, may have something to do with the power band of this particular engine or the power band and the tuning, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all that to say, uh, the number, 2700 PSI, 15 gallons a minute, times 0 0.007 is 28.35 horsepower, which is a huge increase over what it is stock. That is an 80% gain. Uh, if you want to use the 15 and three quarters, it's even more if you use, you know, my anecdotal number that I tell you is less than even 15 horsepower from, from the factory. Now, again, that, the tractor runs just fine. I don't use a lot of PTO implements on it, but as far as like driving, I couldn't tell you any difference between it and my one series. So I feel like it has plenty of power and it does what it needs to do. Uh, I just don't know why that PTO number seemed to be really low. Um, but now, as far as the PTO, if you're running a snowblower, you're running a mower, you're running some of these other things, holy cow, this thing is going to shred, whether it's snow or grass or whatever it is, um, if you so choose. Uh, I would say, my recommendation, you can get 28 horsepower out of it. You probably want to run it where you're not doing that for you know long periods of time, but again, your tractor, do what it, do with it what you like. I will get into the manifold, what the design's going to look like. I'll try to give you some of that information so you know what's coming. I'm not quite close enough where I'm comfortable doing a pre-order, even though I know, and I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say, "I want to give you my money now," and I really appreciate that. But I like to be to a certain uh, level where I, where I can get a really good sense of probably when it's going to launch. So, you know, right now I said it could be April, but I, you know, I would not bet any amount of money on April at this point or even May. 
as we get a little bit closer, I'll know what those are going to be. And then generally, as long as nothing goes wrong, and you know, some of these parts are, are parts I've already had developed, and I have them on my shelf. They don't exist anywhere else, but they're on my shelf. And so I don't have to worry about figuring those things out. I've got to figure out two things. One is the manifold. I'm really close on that. The second thing is the exhaust. And I am, I would say I'm very close on it because I know exactly how we're going to do it. We're going to use the same DPF and the same pass-through bypass uh, as, as the core of the, the exhaust. But we're going to obviously route it in a different way. And I do think um, in this case, because of the way this tractor uh, exhaust comes out, I'll show you here. Um, it's got the little dongle there. We're going to still come out in that same location is my expectation. So, um, whoops, knocking myself over here. Um, it is going to be a sleeper. It's going to be underneath. You're not going to know anything. It's going to have the same exhaust outlet. And uh, you, you will know the difference, though, when you give it the throttle and actually, well, you because it's a governed engine, you're going to have to put a load to it. But hope that was interesting to you. It was interesting to me. This is, I did do this one time before, making sure that I had everything. There's a funny story along with uh, that that I'll tell later. But uh, it, it was a similar number. I did get just a, a skosh more power out of it this time. Uh, I think the first time I ran it, it was about almost 27. Um, but this time it, it seemed to do just a little bit better. Uh, it, it was warmer this time, so maybe that had something to do with it. That's it for today. Questions, comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching.